What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today on the 4th of June of 2019 in terms of my trades, as well as talking about what caused the stock market to go crazy today? What was the catalyst? What was the news? We're going to be talking about that in today's video, as well as just taking a look at some other stocks, some other ETFs on my watch list, so we can kind of understand how the markets perform today on an individual stock basis, and my thoughts and my insights regarding individual stocks and ETFs heading over these next couple of days. But before we do get into the meat of today's video, all I ask from you guys out there is if you enjoy the content, go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you're actually new to the channel and you do find value in this video a couple of minutes down the road and you do want to be a part of our community, there are two links down below in the description box, 100% free of charge. One of them being the Discord group chat and the other one being the Strive Smart Facebook group. Both are very valuable communities with a bunch of like-minded people and I guarantee you guys will find a ton of value if you do join those again linked down below in the description box and without further ado let's just talk about it guys we do have a lot to talk about in today's video so the SPX the S&P 500 index the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies ended up closing the day up a strong 58 points up 2.14 percent here the Dow Jones industrial average up 512 points at the close, up 2.06%. And the big mover today, guys, the NASDAQ up 192 points here, up 2.75% pretty much gaining back every single dollar that was lost in yesterday's session. For those of you guys that weren't paying attention yesterday, we had a bunch of the tech stocks, the dominant uh, companies out there, you know, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, these stocks got hit pretty hard yesterday on some regulation news, on some antitrust news. That brought down the NASDAQ about 2, 2.5%. And you guys can see with the green day that we had today, we pretty much got back all of those losses and some pretty, pretty strong performance here for the NASDAQ. So let's break down some technicals here on the major indexes and talk about what is the catalyst? What was the catalyst? What was the news behind this massive rally that we had today in the stock market? So for those of you guys that have been paying attention to the markets, you do your news, uh, your, your news due diligence, you keep it, you really just keep up with everything that's going on. You probably saw today that Jerome Powell, the Fed chair, he is um, talking about in the public and he's open to potentially cutting the interest rate here if the situation regarding the trade war between the USA and China worsens, right? And for all you guys that don't know, basic economics here, when the Fed is increasing the interest rate, that kind of weighs a bit on the stock market. It kind of makes it more difficult out there for people to borrow money and thus the economy isn't as stimulated, right? When the rate gets cut, rather, it stimulates the economy a bit more. It may pump a bit more optimism into, you know, the stock market and stock prices go up, right? Which is what we ended up seeing today. And for all you all and for all you out there that have been paying attention to the Fed, you know that the interest rate has kind of just been flat here over the past couple of months. So in my opinion, if we do get that rate cut, the markets are going to fly, right? I literally said this in yesterday's video towards the end of the video. I'm not sure if you guys, um, if all you out there were able to catch that, but this is one thing that I personally believe right now, of course, other than uh, a trade deal being done, that, that can bring back the stock market quite a bit, right? Because at this point, there's a lot of negative things surrounding the, the uh, economy, the market, the global economy, where it's going to 
take a lot to push back stocks uh, to the upside, in my personal opinion, right now. But let's say the Fed does cut the rate. That is one thing that I think can um, really push the stock market high. And literally just the news, just the uh, idea of the Fed cutting the rate shot stocks up like crazy now. Just imagine if they actually did cut the rate. We could be shooting back, who knows, to all-time highs again. Not saying that that's going to happen, but I'm just saying that could potentially happen. And of course, like I said, like I've been saying, if there is a miraculous trade deal done between China and the USA, that's going to be a fantastic thing for the stock market. And from there, if that does end up happening, markets should do very, very well. So now, guys, let's just break down some technicals. Now that we got the catalyst out of the way, the news that really shot the markets up today, Take a look at where the S&P is at right now. We ended up closing above $2,800 today, $2,803, which happens to put us right on top of an old resistance, which was, or rather, yeah, an old resistance, which is now potentially a new support with the with the fact that we closed above it today, right? The old resistance was at about $2,800, or, or rather, it was an old support, and we broke below it this past week, and now that made it a resistance. And now the interesting thing here, guys, is if we start to trend back up, let's say we have another green day tomorrow, let's say we start to trend back up into the 2810s, 2820s this is going to be an interesting level because at that point we're going to be looking to maintain um the 2800 level as a support and we'll be battling up here with the 2850 level which would be the next level of resistance but let's say we do end up getting rejected let's say it was just a dead cat bounce let's say the sell-off continues tomorrow what i'm going to be looking for the s p to potentially do is going to be to head maybe Maybe back down towards the middle of this horizontal channel, maybe down to 27.75, maybe even lower down to about 27.60, and just to hover in this little area in general. But all you guys need to know right now, pretty much, we're starting to get back up into that $2,800 level, and I know a lot of you guys probably were thinking to yourselves, oh my god, the market's one green day here, we're finally reversing to the upside, the downtrend is finally over, but the truth is, guys, you know, although we did have a very strong green day today, the overall downtrend, you know, the overall pressure to the downside, you know, on the stock market right now is still very, very relevant, is still very, very there, because we got this news about the rate uh, cut, but it didn't really happen yet, guys. Until it happens, until it really, uh, you know, ends up happening, you know, I don't think this hype is going to last uh, very long. You know, judging on this 20-day, one-hour chart, sure, we did break out of that 50 simple moving average resistance. Very good sign. But overall, guys, we're still trending below the 180 SMA as well. We're still in an overall downtrend here in an overall descending pattern. So the downtrend is still intact although we did have a strong, very strong at that uh, green day today in the markets, right? Judging on, let's say, a 30-day, 90-minute chart, let's see what that's looking like. You know, we did close under um, the 2805 level of resistance here. You know, this is going to be a level we need to break out of if we were to, you know, potentially start a bullish trend here. Let's say we broke into, you know, 2810, 2820, 2830. Let's say we broke out of the one excuse me, uh, the 180 SMA here, um, you know, on the 30 day, 90 minute chart, that could be the breakout that we need for a bullish trend. But until then, we are still in a downtrend here, guys. I cannot stress that enough. Don't let just, you know, one green day, maybe a dead cat bounce, you know, cloud your judgment here. The technicals do not lie. We are still in a downtrend here. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we saw yesterday it dipped in the middle of this horizontal channel from 24,500 up to about 25,500. We can clearly see we ended up closing the day at 25,300. We broke out of the 25,000 resistance level, now holding it as a support again, and we're trading between $25,000 flat and $25,500. That is the new range, the new horizontal channel that we are trading in, and just like 
pick the S&P, guys, although we had a fantastic day today, very good day, the overall trend is still pointing down. We're still trending below the 50 SMA here on the 184-hour chart. The bearish uh, cross is still there, right? We did a bearish cross. The 50 SMA crossed below the 180 SMA there. Judging on some longer or rather shorter-term charts, the 20-day, one-hour, yeah, we did break the 50 simple moving average, which has been a resistance over the past couple of weeks here, but we're still overall descending here. We're still trading under the 180 SMA, and guys, we're still at a lower high from the previous here, meaning the downtrend is still intact. I really cannot hammer this into your minds enough, but let's say we break out of the 180 SMA. Let's say we do something like that. We break out another 2-3% to the upside. That's going to be a pretty strong bullish reversal here on the uh, you know, on the smaller term charts. And at that point, the technicals are going to be telling us a different story. But until that happens, we are still in a downtrend here on the Dow and on the S&P, right? And you're noticing, you do kind of see a nice breakout here on the five day, five minute. I'm sure you guys can see that on the SPX as well. But it's important, like I mentioned on all of these videos, pretty much all these videos to look at a bunch of different charts, a bunch of time frames when doing your analysis. Don't just judge it on here because if you're just looking at this chart, You'd be like, okay, yes, this one is uh, breaking out right now. This is a bullish, um, you know, formation. This is going to the moon, right? That's what you'd think if you were looking at the five-day, five-minute. But then as you scale back, you know, the 10-day, 30-minute, you're like, oh, okay, we did break out of the 50 SMA, but we're still trending below the 180 SMA. That's pretty alarming, right? Then you go out to the 20-day, and it's the same, right? We broke out of the 50, but we're trending below the 180. And for me, guys, for me, to under to uh, really capitalize on a bullish reversal for me to feel confident in it actually being a reversal to the upside, I'd need to see a break out of um, all of these moving average resistances, right? So let's go over here to the NASDAQ. We can see on the 20-day, one-hour chart, just like the Dow and the S&P, the NASDAQ broke out of the 50 SMA resistance. That's a good sign. But we're still trending below the 180 SMA resistance here for uh, for breakout. We would need to see a break out of that 180 SMA resistance. The five-day, five-minute chart here shows a lot of the same, right, as the S&P and the Dow. We notice how we did break out of moving average resistances here, both of them actually, the 50 and the 180. But if we scale back on the charts, we notice how... They're still trending under, or the NASDAQ rather, is still trending under key moving averages that we need to see breaks above for the bullish move. 184 hour chart here, we notice how we ended up holding the $7,000 level of support. That was an old resistance back in the beginning of February, old support back in the beginning of March. That is a very good sign, but again, like I've been saying, guys, we are still downtrending. We're still trending below the 50 simple moving average here with that level being a resistance. So overall, guys, the markets did absolutely amazing today. Fed cut, that could potentially be coming. If that does end up happening, markets will do very well, in my opinion, at least in the short term, because that's going to pump in some optimism into the stock market. And right now, the stock market, it's in deep need of some optimism, right? Some, some, uh, you know, some incentive, honestly, for, for uh, investors out there, people out there, retail investors, traders out there to start putting more money into the markets. And that would most likely push the markets up, in my personal opinion. Do your own research on that. And let me know, honestly, what you guys think about that. I would love to know down below in the comment section. I love chatting with each and every one of you guys. The community we're building here is absolutely amazing. So do not feel shy to hit me up on Discord, on Instagram. You know, drop a comment. I will answer you as soon as I can. And that's within 12, 24 hours most of the time. So let's talk about what I ended up doing today in terms of my trading. It was kind of a um, slower day for me today, guys, to be completely honest with you all. You know, um, I was honestly eyeing up a potential reversal today in the markets. I was looking to potentially play a uh, a bear ETF like the SQQQ or SPXS, those two that go up when the markets are subject 
selling off. I was looking for a potential dump here this morning as we gapped up, right? Because noticing the movement of the S&P over the past couple of weeks, we notice how, again, once we push to a low, we typically gap up for a day or two and then we slowly start the downtrend. I was looking to see if we were, or continue the downtrend rather. I was looking to see this morning, you know, after this gap up, were we going to slowly fade off and maybe sell off or were we going to continue to shoot up. And obviously, we never got that pullback. We pretty much ran up for the entire day today. And I ended up playing TQQQ uh, because of that, right? And TQQQ, although we are looking at the SPX chart, it does not trade on the SPX. It trades on the NASDAQ, right? And the NASDAQ, whenever it's going up, TQQQ is going up three times the way uh, uh, the rate that the NQ is going up. So let's say, for example, the NASDAQ is up 3%. Uh, TQQQ is going to be up 9%, right? Take a look at 275 that's the percentage move on the NASDAQ. And now let's go to the TQQQ. You'll see it's up about 7 8%, right? Look, 8.1%. So again, this morning, I was looking for the pullback in the markets. We did not get that pullback after we gapped up in the morning. That's fine because with leveraged ETFs, there's always, you can always play one side, right? You're either playing the bull side or you're playing the bear side. So today, since we did pop up aggressively, we started to move very aggressively in the NASDAQ. We got that good catalyst this morning about federal, uh, the, the Fed Chair Jerome Powell, him potentially cutting uh, the rates here if the markets continue to get weak. That was a very strong catalyst that shot up the markets. I put some money into TQQQ and I was able to quickly day trade it, right? I'm not going to lie and say that I made the whole 8% because that's not the goal that I'm personally chasing, right? I'm not the guy looking to grab all 8% profit. I'm not even looking to grab half of that, guys. I'm looking to get 1% to 2% on my day trades every single day. If I get 0.5%, that's cool too. I've literally made 0.5% on my day trades before and I'm done trading for the day. I'm not this type of trader that's trying to... Uh, you know, chase the big profits every single day, the big percentage profits, right? So the whole idea here is, you know, we got the gap up this morning. And if we go to the NQ very quickly, you'll be able to see that. Uh, let's see. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I had something in my throat. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so we gapped up pretty heavily, right? We gapped up pretty heavily from 7 o'clock a.m. We were pushing up and then aggressively at about 10 a.m. That's when we started to push up very aggressively. You notice how we broke out of the resistance from about 10 minutes before the market opened at about 9.20 a.m. That's what gave me um, the incentive to go in after this pullback when we retested that resistance as a new support on the NQ and we started to pump back up. Take a look at 10.45 a.m. Where was TQQQ? Let's take a look at that. 10.45 a.m. We were right about here, right? We pulled back. We kissed off that 50 SMA and we continued to run up. So I pretty much got in at $49.10 and I wrote it up for about a 1.2 profit. I got out, I believe, at like $49.75, roughly $49.80. Very quick in and out. Today was very quick, guys. It was about a 30-minute trading day for me. And from there, you guys can see, you know, if I held throughout the entire day, if I knew the markets were going to fly up as much as they as as they as they did, you know, I could have made another three, four percent on my money. But again, I'm a very, very uh, conservative day trader. Um, uh, I would like to think, and I'm okay with grabbing a one percent profit and uh, calling it a day at that point, right? And that's exactly what I ended up doing today with ticker symbol TQQQ. So let's talk about what is my mindset here going up. Uh, you know, onto these next couple of days. So for all you guys that watched my video yesterday, I talked about how that level that the S&P was at could potentially be a bounce spot to the upside, right? We noticed how the S&P yesterday was extremely 
oversold, right? Extremely oversold. We were getting beaten down day after day after day without a real recovery. And I was talking about how this was bound to recover. This was bound to recover for it to pop up a bit for the RSI to get back to comfortable level. And now I'm personally looking and waiting to see, you know, is this news about the Fed cut you know, potentially cutting their rates, is this going to continue to push the market up for the next couple of days? I personally don't know the answer to that, right? And I don't think anybody else out there, obviously no one knows the answer because no one can see into the future. But my whole play right now is, let's say we see some weakness tomorrow in the pre-market. Let's say the futures are down a bit. You know, we could potentially be getting rejected at this level right here. Let's say we run up a bit and we slowly start Start to see some weakness, you know, this could open up a very good entry point on some of these uh bear ETFs that have a ton of margin of profit open on them right on them right now, right? Let me show you guys SPXS. This is one that goes up whenever the S&P is selling off. This is one that I'm watching very heavily into tomorrow. You guys can see this one was down 6.44% today. We got the pullback from $23 down to about 21.30. And it seems like we're holding that 50 SMA support very nicely here. And take a look. If we entered, let's say we got in perfectly. Let's say the markets ended up selling off tomorrow and we got all the way back up to $23 on the SPXS. You would make about 7% on your money, right? And if the markets are selling off um in, the, in tomorrow's pre-market session, you know, this could be a very good play, in my opinion, for a uh, market pullback. And, and let's say the market starts to pull back, you know, it, it, it lines up with the technicals because we talked about the technicals, they're still pointing to more downside. So I wouldn't be shocked if the markets were to pull back in these next couple of days, not saying it's going to happen tomorrow, and for SPXS to be a very good play during those next couple of days. So this is one that I'm watching on a potential market pullback after this massive day that we had today. Excuse me again, guys. Oh, my goodness. I think I ate some Indian food earlier. That is why I'm kind of coughing it up right now, to be honest with you all. I ate halal. I don't even think halal is Indian food. It's more Middle Eastern, and it's very good. I don't know if you guys have ever tried that. It's like it's in a little – It's a, sometimes it's in a food truck. That's the only time that I've personally eaten it, and I love it. So SQQQ. This is one that offers even more margin than SPXS. And SQQQ, this one trades on the NASDAQ 100, right? We saw the NASDAQ did better than all of the other indexes that we talk about on this channel. It was up about 2.75%, hence why SQQQ was down more than the uh, SPXS ETF was, right? It makes a lot of sense here. And with that big pullback, we're at a level where, again, we're on the uptrend still. We're holding the uptrend. Trend. We're holding the 50 SMA here as a support up to the previous resistance at about 49 or 48 dollars. Rather, we have about a 9 10 percent margin of profit here. So, if the NASDAQ ends up selling off heavily tomorrow morning, we start to see potential weakness there. This could be a very good play to maybe bounce. Uh, bounce into for a market pullback in the NASDAQ, guys. I talk about this a lot on the channel. Typically, the NASDAQ moves stronger in one direction than the S&P and the, and the Dow, right? I'm sure if you guys follow the markets every day, you notice how typically the NASDAQ is usually outpacing um, the Dow or the S&P for a particular day, either to the upside or the downside. Hence why we noticed today it did very well the best. And yesterday, it did the worst out of the three. So you kind of have to um, understand that the NASDAQ is a bit more volatile, not every single day, but for the most part, I'd say um, it is. So that's what I'm watching tomorrow, guys. SQQQ, SPXS, those are my main two. But let's say markets can um, continue this rally. Who knows, guys? It really, they, they really might. Who knows at this point, right? But let's say they do continue this rally. I'll just flip into the inverses, right? You see here, 
The inverses are XPXL. I don't know why I don't have that there, but XPXL is going up along with the S&P 500. It tracks the S&P directly at a 3x rate, hence why it was up 6.4% today. And I'll be tracking TQQQ again, what I traded today. And if this goes up tomorrow, obviously if the NASDAQ goes up tomorrow, let's say we continue this rally, this one's going to be very good for tomorrow's session. So let's just go over some uh, brief movements here in some of the big name stocks. You know, Apple had a very strong day today, probably the strongest day that it's had here in the past couple of weeks, up 3.6%. Facebook, up $3.3 here, up 2.04%. Is this a potential bottom on Facebook, guys, at about 160 It could be. Technicals are showing that it's holding it strong and reversing to the upside now. This could be an interesting play over the next couple of days. You know, Google went up 16 points today. Microsoft up three points today. You know, Netflix up 16 points today. Very strong 5% day here on Netflix. J&J &J is another one that I'm personally watching. It's been on my watch list over these past couple of days. We saw the big dip from 140 down to about 128. We're reversing now to the upside, looking to uh, potentially test that 50 SMA here. This could be a very interesting spot on J&J. &J. Take a look and watch if it breaks up into that, breaks out of that level of resistance. It could be a potential play here over the next couple of weeks. The VIX today, the volatility index, was down 10%, down $1.89. Um, since here, some of the inverse ETFs that I'm watching, as always, guys, you know, DWT, you know, drip, you know, crude oil, uh, you know, the gold futures, natural gas, U gas, D gas, JNUG, JDST. These are all ones that I'm trading during volatile times in the stock market. So I don't want to hold you all too long today. I already know just from the sense of it that this video is super, super long today. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Again, it supports me and supports the channel in general. I hope you all do very well tomorrow. Let me know in the comments section what you guys are watching tomorrow, how you did today, what are your opinions on the whole fed um uh catalyst that's going on right now i'd love to know and if you guys haven't yet subscribed to the channel and you stuck this far into the video go down below subscribe to the channel why not hit that notification bell i make videos every single day talking about again oh my god guys talking about stock market investing trading tips all of those different things so if you enjoy that content Feel free to follow along. And again, I appreciate all you guys out there, the new viewers, long-term viewers. You guys mean the world to me. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a great one. Peace out.